Here's a brief summary of the vision, mission, and values of Believer's Church. These are important to know because they answer critical questions about where we're going, how we get there, and what's distinct about our journey. So let's start with vision. Vision answers the question, where are we going? To answer this question, we looked at the beginning and the end of the Bible. In the beginning of the Bible, we see that humans were in the presence of God. Presence here is the Hebrew word panim, which also can be translated face. But these humans disconnected from the presence of God through sin. At the end of the Bible, however, we see that Jesus Christ has made it possible for those who believe in him to end up seeing God's face once again. And so that's where we're going as a community. We're going to God himself. Not a great church, a great life, although these are great things. But they're not adequate to who God has made us to be. He has made us for himself. So our vision is God himself. Let's look at mission. Mission answers the question, how do we get there? Since it's Jesus who is the one who brings us to God, we thought it would make sense to ask him what it looks like to journey to God. Here are familiar words of Jesus. In this passage, Jesus summed up the entire law and prophets. In other words, the way that God gave us to relate to him. In this statement. Now notice this. In this passage, we can see more than one kind of love. We can see love for God and love for neighbor. And as we look throughout scripture, we see two kinds of neighbors. We see those that are in the family of faith and those that aren't, or at least not yet. So this is how we get there. Our mission is to love God, to love his family, and to love the world. One note we like to make at this point is this, is how we structure our community so that we can live out this mission. In 1 Corinthians 12 and elsewhere, Paul speaks of the Christian community, the family of God, as if it were a body. He says there is one body, but many diverse parts. And for love in that body to be healthy, it must balance both its unity and its diversity. Jesus is the head of the body. He's the one who holds it all together. But Ephesians 4 also tells us that God gives us people, spirit-gifted leaders, to help us balance the unity and diversity in the body. These leaders act on behalf of the head, Jesus, to facilitate this unity in diversity. So here's how we live this out at Believer's Church. We call ourselves Believer's Church, and by that we demonstrate that we're one body. There's unity here. But there's also quite a bit of diversity. Here are just a few of the functions that occur in this body. So how in the world do we bring order, like a well-functioning body, to this vast diversity? Well, here's the way we do it. You'll see in the center circle there, we have a leadership team. Instead of just one senior leader, we have a leadership team of four pastors. Roger's the lead pastor. But because it takes more than one person to represent the graces we see in Ephesians 4, he's formed this leadership team to make decisions and consensus as much as possible. This team gives us the ability to lead from the graces that are most natural to each of us. And because of this, we then cluster together those functions in the body that are similar, that have similar graces to them. What we've done with each of these clusters is then name them grace clusters based on the graces that they represent. And for each of them, we've created a leadership team. And each leadership team is comprised of elders and leaders from within the community. And it just so happens that each of these clusters represent one of the five graces we see in Ephesians 4.11. Our hope is that, within this structure, it will be easier for you to find your place in the body based on what grace you carry. So, we've talked about where we're going, how we get there. Now let's talk about what's distinct about our journey. Here are our values what's unique to this particular family we call Believer's Church. You know, we actually believe that God likes the fact that there are a lot of different church families throughout his body. Each have its own flavor and uniqueness, which God enjoys. And so these values are what 
are unique about this particular family called Believer's Church. And I'll make a comment about each one. Discipleship. Do what you love with the one you love for the ones he loves. We can see the three loves of our mission embodied in, the, in this statement. The key word here is with. Discipleship involves a life-on-life -life relationship between God, us, and other people. It involves a long obedience to Jesus in the same direction together. Mission. We are blessed to be a blessing. In God's salvation, his rescue of the world, he came to Abraham in Genesis and said that he would bless him. But the purpose of God's blessing on Abraham was to bless the entire world. Through Jesus, we are children of Abraham, and we receive Abraham's blessings. So the purpose of our blessings is to share them with those who don't yet have them, particularly those who don't have the blessing of knowing and following Jesus. So as a community, we exist for this mission to the world. Creativity. We were created by the Creator to be creative for His glory. God is our Creator, and He made us in His image. So He created us to be, like Him, creative. We bring Him attention through behaving like Him, through living creatively, living outside of the box, engaging our imaginations, which have been baptized and structured, structured by the scriptures He's given us. Presence. We don't want God's promises without God's presence. You know, when God came to Abraham, he promised him these blessings, that, which included land and, the, and his family becoming a nation. For hundreds of years, this promise didn't come true. But then in Exodus, we see that Moses was going to be the person that God would fulfill his promise through for Israel to take them into the land and, a, and make them a nation. But in the process, God became frustrated with Israel because they decided to worship an idol. So God tells Moses they can go into the promised land. They can have the fulfillment of his promise. He just won't go with him. Moses says that there's no way that they will go with God. God is all they have. They will not receive God's promises without God's presence because it's God's presence that distinguishes them from all other peoples on earth. And we feel the same way. Grace is God's disposition and work in us through Jesus. It's like we've fallen and we can't get up. God has run to us in Jesus and picked us up. He's dusted us off and given us a new life and a new future. Grace is God's Spirit doing in us what we don't deserve and can't do on our own. Finally, community. Community is the story of us, us, and yous. Us refers to the Trinity. God is inherently community in his very being. The next us represents us together, the body. We are made in God's image, so being in community with one another is a necessary part of reflecting the very image of God. Use is referring to the fact that we are all individuals within this community. And, and that means that each of us has uniqueness. Each of us has a gift to give. Each of us has a necessary place in the community. We're all needed. So both in our values and how we structure our body, we hope to see the value of community thrive. So, here's the summary of how we understand our vision, mission, and values. God is our vision. Love for God, the family, and the world is our mission. And our values are discipleship, mission, creativity, presence, grace, and community.